There really is nothing like a summer afternoon at a Lake Michigan beach. But you may not realize the millions of fish working hard to keep the lake in balance. Storm Team 8 meteorologist Ellen Baca shows us. Our beaches here in West Michigan are pristine. And actually one of the big reasons why is all to do with salmon. These fish have been swimming in Lake Michigan for decades now, but they aren't from here. The salmon in the big lake are from the Pacific. Yeah, We've been managing salmon in the lake um, extensively since the late 1960s. Jay Wesley is with the DNR, working as the basin coordinator for Lake Michigan. That basically means that I manage Lake Michigan. Just this year, Wesley made the call to stock more than 2 million salmon into the Great Lake, a great addition for local fishermen. That release of those fish in two, three years down the road, we're going to see those rewards. The number of new fish seems high, but it's a carefully calculated number. Local charter fishermen can attest to the surveying that takes place every year to find the right balance. So they have uh, DNR personnel up and down the lake that actually interview anglers, and they use that data, and then they actually use that to kind of formulate what it's gonna, what's going to happen next year, and they do short and long-term plans with the lake also. Salmon bring in hundreds of millions of dollars in recreational revenue each year. But it wasn't the money that motivated the DNR to bring the Pacific fish inland. And then alewife came in and they exploded. Salmon were brought here as a Hail Mary solution to another problem bombing Lake Michigan beaches, an invasive species called alewife. There would be a die off, they'd be littered on the beach. I can remember growing up as a kid in Lake Michigan and in the 70s, uh, hot summer day, you couldn't even go in the water because there'd be eight inches of dead fish on the beach. Bulldozers, they used to, they used to literally come through the beach with bulldozers. Oh, Chicago is covered with dead fish, Grand Haven, Muskegon. June, July would show up and be all these L life. It was just, just horrible. So yeah, that's literally what they had to do. They had to bulldoze the beach. Experts everywhere were rapidly looking for anything that could take the alewife down. The state of Michigan Fisheries Department worked with uh, states out west and uh, saw that they could uh, introduce uh, Pacific salmon into, uh, into the Great Lakes and their favorite food to eat are alewives. Soon the food chain science experiment was a success. Salmon started snatching up alewife at a rapid pace, and now the population is down 90% of what it was at its worst, giving us pristine beaches. We haven't had a, an alewife die off in probably 10 or plus years. This food chain balance requires the release of new salmon into rivers and streams every year by Michigan, Wisconsin, Illinois, and Indiana. Here, it's often done in April. They bring the truck in, they pump the fish into the nets. We had a series of four nets. Uh, between the four nets total, we put in 250,000 fish. The salmon that are raised at the Wolf Lake State Hatchery are right here. And believe it or not, they're about this size when they're released into the Grand River. For success, the salmon have to be introduced while they're small. While tiny and trapped in pens, they acclimate for a couple of weeks memorizing the water and imprinting on the local river they are released in. And they're on their own. Um, so for the next three years, uh, they basically survive in Lake Michigan and thrive, and they go from you know, being that big to hopefully uh, 25, 30 pound kings. When the time comes to spawn, each salmon swims to the river that they remember from when they were young. In fact, 80 to 90% of the salmon introduced then reproduce in the wild making this mega fish addition now both natural and man-made. We talk about it every year, how many we're going to put in the next year. All to keep the lake healthy and the lakeshore clean. Ellen Baca, News 8. The next year, we will follow those newly hatched salmon to show you their life cycle on the big lake and the impact that they have on our lives.